Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi, welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravi Chandran from IIT Kanpur. I am giving you this course for the 8th week. This is module 2, lecture number 44. So, the last week we have started with presentation skills and in the previous one I just told you how to overcome your fear, gave you a lot of practical tips and I hope now you will use it to uh, become confident. Once you have become confident, the next level is to go for giving speeches and becoming a professional. Now, in this module, we will look at how you can really become a professional public speaker, how you can give professional oral presentations. Before I start, let us take a quick review of what I did in the previous lecture. I started with presentation skills in general and then I focused on overcoming fear and how you can develop courage. I highlighted the fact that irrespective of language, whether you speak Hindi or English, so whether you speak uh, Tamil or uh, uh, British English, irrespective of the kind of uh, language that you speak, it is a human tendency to fear speaking in public. People fear this basically for three primary motives, reasons. One is humiliation, that fear that I will be put to public shame. Second is unfamiliarity, you are used to speaking to people, those who are known to you in familiar situations, but unfamiliar speaking to people in unknown places, different venue. And then this fear of the uncertain, something unexpected might happen, things may go wrong. That gives anxiety even to trained, seasoned, experienced actors and professionals that fear that there may be something called bad luck and that may do something, it will mar my uh, presentation. Even a perfectionist in terms of performance has this slight anxious fear. But these things will be overcome if you follow certain steps and go to the stage and start performing courageously after following those steps and it will disappear. Now, what are the steps you can follow in order to overcome fear? First and foremost, it is important that you remain confident. Remaining confident and having a positive self-image is very important. Being determined to do something about the fear is the next important thing that each day you do something. You develop your vocabulary, you develop your uh, way of presentation, you observe people. You try to put yourself in tough situations where you volunteer to give talks, talk to people. Okay. So, each day do something and then start practicing at a small informal level and then let this uh, fight or flight situation come to you and fight the situation, confront public speaking and keep this inner energy, adrenaline pumping out from you, whatever resources that are needed for giving the talk. Knowing that people do not really care about what you do also helps to overcome your fear. Similarly, knowing the subject thoroughly and believing in it is another key in overcoming your fear. Preparing and practicing, there is no shortcut here, you need to do that. And when you reach the venue, keeping a relaxed frame of mind. So, that also helps you. Breathing exercises, normal exercise before uh, giving a talk, they all keep your nerves in a very calm and controlled manner. And the next important thing is being empathetic to the audience. Value their time, value their presence, respect their knowledge also. So, even while preparing, you should know the kind of audience who are going to come, respect their sensibility and intelligence level respect their time, do not ever think that you will give a boring talk, 
make it as interesting as possible, make it as informative as possible and audience will start looking forward to your talk. And overall, when you go for uh, giving a talk, the last thing as well as the first thing is visualizing the delivery, thinking that you will get applause at the end of your talk because you have prepared so well thinking that you will get a standing ovation. So, these things will actually make you go there and deliver it confidently and get the deserved applause, whatever price appreciation from the audience if you go with this visualization. Now, in this uh, module, let us look at how you can actually become a professional public speaker. A quick overview of what I am going to discuss briefly, view the venue welcome the viewer, master your material, calm your mind, visualize yourself speaking. Let us look at these ones in detail. Now, before you actually go to the venue and deliver your talk, keep these things in your mind. First realize that people want a winning leader. So, when you go for giving a talk, they actually consider you as the leader okay, and they are sitting there as followers. And even when somebody is asking a troublesome question to you, even if they might be knowing the answers to the troublesome question, they just want you in a very appreciative manner as the leader to answer that first. Only if some people see you struggling to answer or they think that you could have answered it better, then they come for your rescue. Okay. That is because they think that or they give you that role that you are the leader when you give the talk. So, they, you understand this. So, do not go there with the kind of uh, low self esteemed person. Once you go and then give a talk, you are the leader. That is another reason why you should avoid apologies. Saying sorry, sorry I did not come, uh, come prepared. In fact, if you are not prepared, do not give the talk. Okay. You should go and give the talk only if you are thoroughly prepared going and telling them that, oh, I am sorry, I could not prepare, I had this problem, that problem okay. and saying again, uh, giving apology for the fact that you are nervous, saying that I feel some butterflies uh, flying in my stomach, so I feel very nervous to stand before you, you are all so great people and all that. Do not say any apologies because of the reason that I told you, they are not going to see any nervousness in you unless you recall their attention to it. So, do not do that and then apologizing is really bad as a start. So, do not do that and when you do that, that is when you focus on your talk, focus on your message, what you are going to give, okay, the content, not the medium in the sense that if you are using English language to convey something. Do not bother what will happen if my pronunciation goes wrong, what will happen if I make a grammatical mistake, what will happen if I make a spelling mistake when I write something on the board. Do not bother about that at the time of delivery because even audience do not care much about it. They really do not care, they just want to know what you are going to tell them, what is the message how you convey is important, but then even if you use some wrong procedures to convey the right thing, people are going to overlook the wrong ones because they are not bothered about what mistakes you are doing, okay, but they are really concerned about what message you are going to pass to them. Okay. And nervousness that is there as I said before, try to change that into positive energy slight nervous energy is helpful and then keep gaining experience. Once you go to the hall, you should get a feeling that okay, I will do a good presentation now and then I will keep coming. This is not the first and last, it is just a beginning. So, if you go with that view, okay, so then keep these things in mind. Before giving the talk, view the venue. Okay. One reason why we are actually having fear is the unfamiliarity. We are afraid of new places, new surroundings. Now, go even stand on the stage if nobody is there, give a rehearsal, 
you might have seen professional dancers, professional actors, they will have the final rehearsal on the stage because they just want to familiarize themselves and they do not want to make any mistake. So, you also go and familiarize with the place in which you will speak, you slightly walk, you move here and there, even you give the talk. Okay. So, that will make you very confident and the other thing you should do is just like in an interview, you should go to the venue before time. You should go much before, check the uh, presentations, check what kind of presentation you are going to give, even mic, whether everything is working or not and much before the audience would start coming, be there, be there to welcome the viewer. So, you can just greet the audience as they arrive, smile, maintain eye contact. So, if you can be just uh, at the entrance or down or just keep walking and then if you if you want to just know their uh, uh, reasons for coming to your talk, you can just ask them hello, how are you? So, where are you coming from? So, what is your area? So, what made you come to this talk? What is your expectation? Okay. So, these things will actually make them feel familiar with you and maintain a rapport even before you start giving the talk they are already becoming flexible and open minded to receive your talk. So, that is why it is important to welcome the viewer and be there as a kind of host even before the people come to the uh, venue. And as I said before, master your material, practice your speech or presentation any number of times possible. There was a multinational company and then the interview was the next day at 10 a.m. Okay. The previous day they called all the candidates who are coming for the interview and then they gave a very bulky volume of their annual report and then they said that you have to come tomorrow and then just give a presentation based on this and then you should be thorough with all the facts which are mentioned here. So, it is and then they said you should not use any powerpoint or anything, no materials, you should be thorough with everything and then you should come and give a presentation for 15 minutes. Now, there are about 50 candidates and then uh, uh, about 20 candidates did not turn up at all because even reading that, so they felt sleepy and then they slept early somebody thought that they will uh, smoke and then uh, they will be able to sit through, but then after some time they felt frustrated, some of the facts were too taxing to remember, it could not be memorized without writing it. Somebody thought we will take some liquor, some drinks and then we will be able to remember and then fell flat after some time. So, it was going on like that. So, the next day of the 30 people who turned up, so, they were all asked to do it uh, simultaneously and they were recording all of their uh, uh, presentation separately and each one was uh, viewing and then the boss was overall taking a look at how they are doing it. So, many people failed, they could not go beyond uh, two, three pages of uh, what was there in the report. There was only one candidate whom they selected finally, who was thorough with all the pages and any cross question they asked, he was able to answer and then he gave a very impressive presentation and then any anything they asked without looking at the report, he was able to answer them. So, they asked how was uh, that possible when all others could not do that and the time given was same. So, he said that sir, it was the same time given, but then I utilized the entire time. The time you gave it to me, I started reading it. When I was going by bus, I was reading it. So, when I was eating, I was using a spoon and but my mind was completely focused on this. I did not sleep enough because I did not want to miss this thing. So, I sat through almost the entire night, just took brief naps in between and then morning I revised. I revised again before coming. Even when I was sitting there and waiting for the call, I was again revising this and 
I didn't want to miss even a single chance because I need this job so desperately and I want to prove to you that I can give a very sincere and honest presentation. So mastering your material will impress the audience, will get you what you want in your life and that practicing, okay, so that the time that you put in practice will directly tell the audience whether you are sincere, serious and whether you have uh, considered the time of audience, whether you are valuing and respecting them. Depending on that, they will uh, disregard you or hold you in high esteem. So, in this case, they selected him, they were very happy to select such a candidate. So, prepare, practice thoroughly, then calm your mind. So, engage yourself in exercises to release tension as I was saying uh, previously also, use that rowing technique, breathing technique, deep breathing, okay. even if you do not have to do complicated ones, especially if you are, if you are so suffocated sitting in a room, just go out, take a slight walk under the tree and then take deep breath and then come back. So, that will again uh, uh, make you feel very calm and then do not let any negative chatter in your mind, visualize yourself speaking, success is achievable if you visualize and as I said visualize that you are giving the most powerful and terrific speech that nobody has ever heard, thoroughly prepare for that. And then people want a winning leader because audience want speakers to succeed not fail. When you visualize uh, that you are succeeding, even audience actually are sitting there to clap their hands, they are just waiting for the best part of your speech and they want to appreciate you, they are not there to criticize you, so they want you to do the best, they want the speaker to take lead, they want the speaker to tackle the viewers, okay. so that is the reason why you should avoid apologies, never mention your nervousness or apologize for it. Focus on your message, not the medium, do not nurture anxieties, but concentrate on your message and then turn nervousness into positive energy. Nervousness is actually an asset to you, harness it and transform it into vitality and enthusiasm and gain experience. It is experience that will build confidence in public speaking, the more experienced you are, the more confidence you will have. Now, let us look at briefly as once you have gained the confidence, what should you do and what are the objectives of public speaking and what should you be doing accordingly. So, the objectives are of four uh, categories, one to entertain that is to interest or amuse the audience, audience want to listen to jokes, audience want to listen to stories, audience want narration, audience want just to be entertained, you, you do not have to give any message. Okay. They just want to have a nice time, but the second aim is to educate. Audience also would like to get some information, so you have the role of teaching the audience and you have the uh, ability to give them something and then they can learn from you through public speaking. The next objective is to provoke, sometimes you can use public speaking to stimulate or impress the audience or to provoke them to do something in your favor against somebody. So, if you are very much interested in public speaking, you should read Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, particularly the speeches of uh, Brutus and Antony and then you should see how they are able to provoke the crowd both in their favor as well as against their enemies. Okay, and then they are able to use public speaking as a very powerful tool. And then it is not only to provoke, but also to influence, to convince or persuade the audience. Okay. You can even change, you can influence positively, you can even influence negatively. The negative influence like for example, marketing people, they influence negatively to do something, maybe they buy a product which you throw it after some time but you can also positively influence people. Like for example, I am trying to educate, I am also trying to provoke sometimes, I am also entertaining you, giving stories, jokes and all that, but I am also trying to influence, I am also trying to convince, okay, and I am also trying to persuade. 
So, try to uh, remember these objectives and then try to use them in your speech. Okay. It is not at the cost of one over other, not only entertainment. So, audience will feel that they have also wasted time, at least some of them. And how do you structure your speech? Structure your speech around three or four main points. In fact, you remember the main points in terms of phrases or keywords and keep the audience interested by a few anecdotes. So, use small stories at the beginning, in the middle, at the end. And then if you have to summarize your main points in a sentence, in a single slide, okay, how will you do that? So, you might have noted that I just summarized the entire previous lecture in the first slide of the next lecture. So, when you summarize, so that helps the audience to recall the main points. And if you could do that when you give a small talk in a sentence or two, that again makes the audience interested in your talk. And make sure that you end on a strong positive point. So, this is uh, if you again notice uh, my lecture, I try to make sure that I always end with a positive note, I always end with a kind of positive thought, positive quote, so that you remain motivated, because it is important that you leave the audience with the motivated feeling. So, having listened to your lecture, they feel motivated, they should come back to your lecture. So, structure your speech in that manner. When you actually go for making the presentation, what should you do? It is very simple thing uh, told by Dale Carnegie in his famous book on public speaking and that is the kind of mantra, the formula. It is first thing is tell the audience what you are going to tell them. Okay. So, before you begin the talk, tell them briefly, this is what I am going to talk to you or these are the three points I am going to discuss, then tell them, describe what you are going to tell in detail with examples, with illustrations, with anecdotes, with stories, with messages, you tell them. At the end of it, tell them what you have told them. That means, you again summarize what you have said. So, in the beginning, you prepare them and in the middle, you describe and explain to them elaborate what you wanted to tell, at the end you summarize, conclude with one very summarizing powerful thought and then leave the audience. So, then they will remember your talk. While starting, how do you do that? Start strong and then you should also finish strong. You can begin with a question sometimes a very controversial question you can ask. You can open with a story, you can start with a quotation or you can use a startling statement. So, something like you can ask, so what will you do if the world is going to end in the next 5 years? Okay. So, everybody is startled, then you say that, so this disaster is going to happen, if you start using this. So, and then uh, create an awareness about this thing and then you start your talk. So, you can start strong, you should also try to finish strong. In the opening, try to establish relevancy of topic to audience. This means, whatever you are going to talk, you should tell the audience why they are there and how you can relate that to the audience. What is the relevance? And try to involve the audience, you can ask questions you can tell them to ask doubts, you can ask provoking questions, you can challenge them. Okay. So, you puzzle them and then create their curiosity. So, in the opening itself, you try to make them involved, create the rapport, establishing that rapport okay, that both of you are together, that will make you much more comfortable and confident. Okay. Now, the first point, when you state the first point, you clear language to state point. So, it should be very clear, they, there should not be any ambiguity, no error in pronunciation. If you make a mistake, repeat it again, but the first statement that you make should be very clear to them. Use evidence, both verbal and visual to support your point. So, not necessarily you should say only, but use 
like you can use PowerPoint, use pictures, use graphs, use nonverbal communication and then amplify your point with an incident or anecdote. Whenever you try to elaborate, try to relate it with some kind of narratives. So, that is the one as most of you have told me uh, given feedback that the stories that I have told you so far are the ones that you remember and you are able to connect to the concept very quickly. So, try to use that, try to give small anecdotes. Okay. Develop a logical transition or bridge to your next point. Okay. Do not jump from one idea to another. So, use connectives. So, you can say I am going to talk about 5 items okay, and then you say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if it is a contrary one, use again connectives, but however, nevertheless. Okay. So, give the audience a logical transition and then they will be able to understand that okay, uh, he is going from this point to another, but this point is going to contradict because he is saying nonetheless, nevertheless, however. So, he is bringing a contradictory view and they know that if you are adding more points, you say in addition, moreover. So, give coherence, let them not get a feeling that oh, he started saying something, it is so scattered at the end of it, it was like all sound, okay, but then meant nothing. How do you close? When you close, summarize your points, state your conclusion and make it relevant to your audience. So, you can make it relevant to the audience by telling them why in the first instance you started this or like you can leave it again with a positive thought and make them think over that and then show them that how relevant it is to continue with this activity practice in their day to day life. Let me now conclude with one positive thought for uh, this session. This is from Christopher Reeve the actor who first performed this uh, uh, Superman uh, uh, series in movies and then uh, this is something that is relevant to you in terms of building you yourself as a very influential public speaker. Look at what he says, he says so many of our dreams at first seem impossible, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible. So, even the dream of giving a talk before thousands of people at first becomes impossible. Okay. You fear, oh, it is not possible. And then when you visualize, okay, I can do, I will start with 3 minute talk, I will just do 1 minute quick talk on something, then they seem improbable. Improbable is slightly possible, but not completely impossible. And once you start doing that okay, and then visualizing that and then when we summon the will, when you become determined, when you use willpower that I am going to do this, when you push yourself to slightly break your existing mold of thinking and try to challenge you and your own behavior and decide to confront, when you summon the will, they soon become inevitable. So, inevitable is like bound to happen, it will happen. So, when you decide that you will become the public speaker and then just summon the will, become determined and overcome your fear, practice, give presentation one after another, then it becomes a natural thing to you, it becomes inevitable, people will call you, invite you for talks. People want you to present their own things, you become a professional. So, with that thought, I wish you all the best to become a very powerful public speaker, use oral presentation. In the next lecture, I am going to focus on what kind of body language you should have when you are going to give this presentation. That is again equally important, but dream now and then visualize that you will become a successful uh, public speaker. With that thought, let me thank you. Thank you for watching this video. All the best and uh, see you in the next one. Have a nice day.